Did you catch last episode? That was part one of our trip to Boston for our family reunion. It had been since before COVID that we all got together, so it was really nice to connect with family. Hey everyone, and welcome to our crazy life on board Tangaroa. Two years ago, we decided it was time for our family to move on to a boat, but not just any boat. 1969 aluminum trawler that needed a lot of work. Of course, being the crazy people we are, we decided we could do the whole refit ourselves. I personally am surprised that we're not divorced yet and that our kids have not disowned us. But soon, Tangaro will be ready for our trip around the world. We hope our adventures inspire you to live each day with laughter and appreciation. Visit us at onboardtangaroa.com for early access to ad-free videos. We all had an awesome time in Salem, but we're tired. Look, Izzy's asleep. Josh is just over there somewhere. Lane's driving. We're in Boston traffic. When was ever driven in Boston, you guys are all crazy. Like this is so much traffic compared to Vancouver Island. Later in the week, we decided that we needed lunch out. So we headed to Kimball Farms, which has been around the area since 1939. Okay, so when you're in Boston, this is what you eat. Fish and chips. Haddock bites. Lobster roll. And deep fried shrimp. That's Did I say that right? That's right. Can you do that without a Louisiana accent? Deep fried shrimp. Deep fried shrimp. Boston accent, come on, for haddock bites. Haddock bites. That's the Boston accent. That's all I got. <laughs> After Kimball Farms, we decided to go someplace that Uncle Brad and Kathy had not been yet. Uh... <laughs> it was such a muddy trail, it was just easier to take the flip flops off. Well, that was fun. William Bancroft in 1906 built this castle as a gift for his wife. He intended it as a bungalow to accompany a larger castle-like house, but he lost funding, basically ran out of money before any additions could be realized. In 1918, a physician named Harold Ayers purchased the bungalow and renovated it into a sanitarium. And during the 1930s, the Groton Hunt Club used the bungalow for entertainment. During a July 4th fireworks celebration in 1932, the bungalow caught fire, leaving only the exterior stone walls intact. It was actually kind of cool because climbing, you could see a lot of the burnt wood still embedded into the rock. And just to let you know, Blaine and I aren't that worried about Josh and Izzy climbing. They both study climbing in school. Yep. Instead of phys ed, they climb. Castle was actually an awesome way to let Josh and Izzy burn off some steam. No. No, I don't think so. Okay, our recommendation was no.
When they're 18 years old, there's not much you can do but give your recommendation. They've kind of got to learn for themselves. We're off on our adventure again. This time, well, we got Izzy back there. Josh is playing Pokemon Go, and we are heading to Old North Bridge. And this is the bridge where the shot heard around the world was shot, which is where, what is it? The beginning of the Revolutionary War. Revolutionary War? I believe so. I think it's the American Revolution. We don't really know our American history, but we're learning it. Hey, Blaine, give us a synopsis. Where are we? Um, we are in the Miniman National Historical Park, uh, which is basically the starting place of the American Revolution. Still don't know who did that shot. As the British soldiers marched back towards Boston, colonial militia companies poured in. Fighting erupted along Battle Road from 12.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. that day as nearly 4,000 colonists unleashed an incessant fire upon the British regulars. At the end of the day, the colonists surrounded and laid siege to Boston, and the Revolutionary War had begun. Right at this spot that we were about to show you. Morning of April 19, 1775, while the British held the bridge, the Minutemen and militia of Concord and neighboring towns gathered on the hill across the river. That hill right there. there. Can you just imagine all the British soldiers right there and the militia? Actually, the, the British. There, the, British were here. the militia was over there? Yeah. The British were here on this side? Yes. Yeah. There is like a tour group following us onto this bridge. Izzy and Josh are like, run away, run away. <laughs> so imagine 400 colonials right there on the hill overlooking the North Bridge, which we just saw over there. There's the North Bridge. Well, it's your history. What do you think, Blaine? Can you imagine what happened just like right history. behind us? I never did much like history in, in school, but I like reading about it now. Well, it's a big thing. Since we live in Canada, we're still kind of under British rule, right? We're still a colony, part of the Commonwealth. A bit, yeah. And here, this is where they kicked the Brits out, basically, where it all started. Yeah, so For a good reason. If it didn't start here, and if that shot didn't start around the world, they'd probably still have the Queen on the back of your money, too. Quite possibly. Hmm. Old man's. Follow the rock wall all the way up. We had an awesome visit to the Minutemen Park. We learned lots of history and saw the North Bridge. It was actually really amazing, but our favorite part was the old boathouse. This river is hot. After our visit to the North Bridge, we got to drive through Concord. We had to head over and get our tests done. So in order to get back into Canada, we need our PCR tests, which we are at a drive through PCR test right now. Busy's next, but they're just doing lower nasal wipes and then it gets sent to lab and we have to have the results be covid free within 72 hours of flying or we can't get back into canada Hold on though. Let's hope I'm COVID free. Guess what? We're going on a food tour. So Izzy wanted to go see the witch house, which we did. Josh wanted a food tour. So we just drove to Alewife State Alewife? Alewife? Alewife. It's like beer wife. Alewife? Yeah. Station. 
And we, ow, oh, you keep hitting with the thing. Um, and we are going to go on the tea, they call it here. And Blaine and I don't do teas. We don't have them in Victoria. So we're a little bit um, out of our element, let's say that. Say once you get older, you regret. Did you design that? Yeah. Wow. Pretty colorful. Yeah. It'll be fun. You could probably do that to a little bit. I think <laughs> I think it is her job. Ah, uh, maybe someday. I'm a student still, oh. so we'll see. But And then we were at the Bean Town pub where our food tour kicked off. Hey Blaine, what are you having? I'm having a clown shoe. Rainbows are real. Clown shoe, rainbows are real. Okay, I hear let's see the response. On your now. Yeah. Very light, very yeah. Nice. Does it taste like clown juice? It does not taste like clown shoes. Shoes, not shoes. Shoes, yes. I know, yeah, but. Like yeah, I know. In, in Boston, they have a lot of unfiltered cider, so that's why it's so hazy. What do you think? It's more food. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. So Everyone had heard of Boston Baked Beans, which is proving to be totally not the case. Uh, how about the nickname Bean Town? Anyone heard of that before they came to Boston? Okay. So more people have heard of that, but being that most people haven't uh, heard of the baked beans, you probably don't know that the nickname was derived directly from the dish that you're about to have. So we're going to kind of neatly tie all of that into a little uh, package for you. So in cans. So if you look, closely um, around the side of your uh, bread you might see some little um, oh, yeah. edges there from the side of the can. If you've never had bread from a can before you will never be able to say that again uh, because that's exactly what you're eating right now and specifically it comes from a can that looks just like this. It actually has been around since the 1840s and today the beans? it occupies most of the baked bean real estate on the shelves. Aren't very sweet at all. Stores. Other parts of the country I think that's the bushes and other kinds of baked beans like that, but here uh, B&M is the local favorite and uh, sometimes if you're not looking closely, the bread bean story what do you think? Um, in and uh, of itself. I'm going to let Bailey tell you that one. You don't like baked beans uh, and bread bread? In no. New York, maybe? This is cool. Sunsets in Boston Kissing yellow concrete Besides food, we were uh, also shown where the Ponzi scheme was born. Scheme, uh, but his particular scheme was so uh, significant that when it all came crashing down, his name has forever been associated with the pyramid scheme that we now know the as the Ponzi, Ponzi. Wish it lasted forever But it faded Like pub after pub after pub. Adios. Could I 
Christ. Right there is the old Union Oyster House, the oldest continuous running restaurant raw bar in basically all of the United States. So this is pumpkin cider we're gonna try. Not bad, not bad. Well, what do you think is? Some good lobster rolls going on here. Yeah, I know, right? Mm. <laughs> it's gonna be challenging to bite here. Yeah, that's a big knuckle of lobster. Mm. And we are off. Next stop, are you ready? Guess what? Next stop, Boston Cream Pie. To get real Boston cream pie, we went to the Omni Parker House where it was originally created. We went to Boston, we have traditional Boston cream pie. This is a traditional recipe. Does not look like Boston cream pie. It should become a Betty Crocker mix at one point too. What do you think, Izzy? Um, I don't know what to think. You don't know what to think yet? Still following the Freedom Trail, heading to the USS, what? Constitution. Constitution. Battle of Bunker Hill. June 17, 1775. This tablet marks the point where the British reinforcements landed. This is the USS Constitution. Oldest commissioned warship afloat. Look how big those masts are, Blaine. Blaine, you're going on the oldest commissioned. Oh, this is Old Ironsides. The USS Constitution, also known as Old Ironsides, it's a three-masted, wooden-hauled, heavy frigate of the United States Navy. She's the world's oldest ship of any type still afloat. Look at all the stays. She is 304 feet long, weighs 2,200 tons, and has 44 guns oh, on close. board. She's 43 feet, what? six inches wide, and has a draft of 21 feet. Yep, and you can touch. That's called cheesing the line. I want this for a nap stateroom, but the beds are really small. And if you're wondering, she does 13 knots and carries 450 people, including 55 Marines and 30 boys. Oh, it looks like a mess of sailors. It looks like, oh, this is just a huge, big mess, right? Uh, they basically eat with their gun teams, which range anywhere between 6 to 14 people. And then they basically get canvas out here, and then they go crisscross applesauce, and they eat down here. There's a room for you. Comfy little hammock, little writing desk. So what are we That's looking at? The killer, I should say. So you're looking at all up top, all the degree marks for it. Of the oh, starboard turn, turn, port turn. Yeah, and they, they. It looks so weird going backwards, but the tip, the tiller would go. The tiller would you would turn it that way to go to port, and that way to go to starboard. It's just backwards looking oh, at it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Huh. And I guess they just shouted orders, and they would pull one way or the other. Port turn 15 degrees. These are. These are your bar shots. These are your cannonballs. Great shot. So that's full of little cannonballs like this. So that's to take down masts and stuff like that. Oh yeah, it, that would spread out. So when you shoot it, this would spread right out and go. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So we just went did the USS Constitution. Stupidly, I did not know it was a ship. I thought we were going to like a modern day destroyer or something. Yeah. I didn't know it was like a tall ship this like is this. A, a like, look at behind beautiful, us. Beautiful ship. It's stunning. You can go all the side. Classic warship. Did not know. Absolutely beautiful. And I got a really cool coin, which I don't even remember where I put it. Hold on. Right here. We got a USS Constitution coin to bring on board Tangaroa. Right there. But yeah, if you get in Boston, come see this because it is yeah, a it's cool a, it's ship. It's an amazing ship. Good history. Everywhere we go, we find anchors and Josh climbs. It's a big anchor. 
We also do our best to find places where we can relax and have a drink. And since we were missing being on the water so much, we decided to take the ferry back to downtown Boston. Hi, Josh. Heading to Boston, downtown. Going home. It's actually been a good trip, but we're ready to go back to Tangaroa and make sure she's still afloat. <laughs> Even though Blaine's been checking the cameras and the bilge cam. Daily. Daily. Multiple times daily. It's really nice to have cameras on the boat to know what's happening. But yeah, it's a good dead home. We're just in the Boston airport right now and flying Boston to Montreal and then Montreal straight to Victoria. And we'll get back to the boat around midnight, I think. Something like that. Not yep. Sure. It's going to be a light, tender ride back. But again, it's going to be good to wake up tomorrow morning and have coffee and tea on the front deck. A border services officer will verify that you have submitted your information as required. Thank you. Tell we're back in Canada. Why? Because you get mayonnaise. With the French fries. Right. And in Montreal, we have poutine. I hope you enjoyed our Boston adventures. It's so good to be back to Tangaroa. Don't forget to head to onboardtangaroa.com to check out all the good stuff.